Incendiary title, I know. Clickbait? Probably not. Look, I'm not here to yell at you. I'm here to draw some conclusions, and it's up to you to decide if you think my art is terrible. If you don't like what I'm putting down, then I'm yelling at you, but let it be known that it was your choice to recognize it. Okay, I'm in the moral clear now, so on with the thesis and the actual title of the video, Why Camping in Dead by Daylight is Bad. We can all agree that we generally hate it when our agency is completely removed in video games, right? There are hilarious videos from back in the day where people are corner trapping other players in Call of Duty. Nope, and now I'm stuck in the corner because he's a fucking loser. Heck, even I made some videos doing just that. In most instances, when people get their agency removed for a long period of time, they understandably get annoyed. That's because they bought the game so that they could play them. Playing games requires our agency and we can't play when our agency is removed. In Dead by Daylight, hook camping completely removes your agency for an extended period of time. Now before you barge in to comment about how I'm hypocritical and I remove people's agency myself, let me explain the major differences between removing agency via hook camping in DBD and removing agency in other games. By explaining those differences, I'll naturally be highlighting why hook camping is bad and, subsequently, why it needs to be removed from Dead by Daylight. First of all, hook camping is a strategy that can push you, as a killer, closer to your objective. And no, I don't give a shit about the emblem system. I'm talking about the real objective that's universally agreed upon. Killing. They're called killers. They're not called emblem collectors. They're not called hookers. They're called killers. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to say that killers win if they kill three or more survivors in a match. That's it. A 2k is a draw and below that is a loss. So, hook camping is a viable strategy and often the best strategy to get more kills, thus completing your objective better. In other games, the process of taking away someone's agency for an extended period of time usually means that the completion of the objective is being tossed aside because we're wasting time trapping our teammates in corners. Also, the amount of effort it takes to corner camp, for example, is huge compared to the effort required to camp in DVD. Even if, in the other games, it were the enemies having their agency removed for extended periods of time, it would still not be effective compared to just killing that enemy. Worst of all, when you're in the game as a killer, Hook camping just feels intuitive. Pretend you're a new player and you're playing one of your first killer matches. You down Claudette, pick her up, and put her on a hook. Now what? Where do you go? Sure, you could patrol gens and maybe find a baby survivor that actually does a gen. Fat chance of that. But there's seven generators across the entire map, and there's only one hook right next to you. Your goal is to kill people, and you know that the timer on the hook will tick down and eventually kill her. Even if you don't really care about her dying right here, you want to play the game and chase other survivors. It's so much easier to have a survivor come up to you rather than patrolling gens on a chance you'll find a survivor or even worse having to search for stealthy survivors with no guarantee you'll actually find them, all while Claudette is getting pulled off the hook uncontested. So the question is, what's stopping you from waiting here and watching her die as your objective gets closer to completion? Not a single generator has been done because God knows that the new survivors you're playing against, you know, assuming matchmaking is working correctly, haven't even put their hands on a gen because it's scary to make noise. So, it's just you and Claudette. Why should you ever leave that hook? Who gonna stop me? Who's gonna stop me? I will. If we two people, who gonna stop me? Jeez. You're not stopping me! The answer is that you have no reason to leave the hook. The game told you, the killer, to kill survivors, and that you kill survivors by sacrificing them on hooks. There isn't anything right now telling you to move, so you naturally wait out the timer, Claudette dies, and now you have three quarters of your objective left. You're a killer. You've killed one, and there's just three more to go. And by the way, they still haven't done any gens. But can you? I hear you say. Even though it's happened so many times, you can't take a hypothetical example to extrapolate that all game balance must be done from that viewpoint. Well, you're kind of right, but that's not why I talked about the hypothetical. The hypothetical is to show how deep-rooted of a problem hook camping is. It's intuitive to hook camp, not just for veterans who understand all of its consequences, but for new players as well. That's the problem. In order to curb hook camping, we need it not even to be possible, much less intuitive. Now going back to my explanation of the differences between hook camping in DBD and agency removing playstyles in other games, like Call of Duty Corner Trapping for example, 
Hook camping is incredibly, incredibly easy to do while also being incredibly, incredibly strong. Ots Darva did a test where as Bubba, he hook camped survivors until they died in a custom match against a good squad that he explicitly told he was going to hook camp and allow them to prepare accordingly. And I still managed to get two kills in controlled environment where they knew exactly what they were doing. I still managed to get two kills. Now you might say that the survivors weren't actually that good if two of them died against Ots, but come on dude. I think Ots, the person with thousands of hours and the person who's completed so many killer challenges would be able to recognize when survivors are good. He called them good. That's enough for me and it should be enough for you. Anyways, the fact that he drawed with them should show you how good hook camping is as a strat. The main thing people say when a person's getting hook camped is, Oh, it's easy to counter, just do all the gens and you'll win. Because of how space and time works, it's not an easy choice to sit on gens if you don't know what the killer is doing. If your survivor teammate gets hooked, every single second that passes you have to make a read that the killer will camp or he won't. If you're wrong and you stay on the gen, then the killer gets a second hook stage or even a kill while also chasing someone else. If you're wrong when you go to save your buddy, now you'll get downed and hooked and sometimes you won't even get the save. Or you go hide by the hook waiting for the killer to leave and the killer doesn't leave, then you just wasted time doing no gens while the killer still gets hook progress. Now think of all of that, except it's not just you constantly making this read every single second, but it's also your two other survivor teammates. Imagine you all making the wrong read and hide by the hook waiting for the killer to leave. Sure, you could have Kindred, but the killer could just sit outside its range. And sure, you could be in a four-man squad, but even with that, the killer definitely will still get a kill, or two in Oxdarvis' case, if your teammate was downed early. And again, with the four-man squad, does it seem fair that the expense of three people escaping is one of your friends having their agency completely removed and having to say, Oh, this killer's camping me, guys. Just do gens and get out. Do you really think that's fair, especially for how easy it is to hook camp? Which brings me to my next point. Ideally, you, the killer, should have to hook survivors about 10 to 12 times to kill them all. Put in those terms, one hook is one twelfth of your objective. Also take note that killers are meant to catch survivors. In a vast majority of chases, killers are going to get the down because they have the overwhelming advantage and rightfully so. But it isn't fair that you should be so incredibly awarded for getting one twelfth of your objective completed. Again, remember that all three other survivors have to constantly make a read about whether or not you'll hook camp. Odds are that at least one of them is going to be wrong. You've done barely anything, you know, one twelfth of your objective, and now you have insane pressure. It's not skillful to sit by a survivor and it's barely skillful to achieve one twelfth of what you're expected to do. And even with the fact that you're expected to win chases, and you probably use skill during those chases to win them, so I'm not going to take that away from you, but hook camping's other huge problem is that after the chase is won, you don't have to do anything skillful to camp. You just sit there and wait. There should never be a mechanic in this game where survivors have to go to a single location that a killer can defend in order for the survivors to survive or, you know, win, which surviving is their win condition. Even if the killer isn't fully aware of that singular location. That's why they remove the ability for Pig to get kills by camping a single box. That's why Pinhead doesn't know the location of his box. And even with his example, Pinhead sitting by his box all game does not mean his objective is completed. He still has to go do the killing. Although the survivors sure are slower at gens, they're still not getting killed if the pinheads sat at one spot, so they'll still escape eventually. And even with single locations that are known by the killer, like a 3 or 5 stack devour hope, the killer will not win just by guarding it because that killer still has to move away from the totem to stop the survivors from escaping. That's why, when the survivors have one generator left to complete, there's three gens and not just one gen. Again, the killer should never be able to complete their objective by simply defending a single spot, whether or not they know that spot exists. Which is even more egregious in the hook camping case because killers know where they've hooked survivors. And the topping on this shit cake is that they do a maneuver which is devoid of skill. Uh, he's just standing there. Menacingly! Tunneling, something I haven't even mentioned yet, is a problem as well. 
partially because tunnel survivors really don't have much of a choice since their options for looping are extremely limited. I guess you could say that about any scenario where you're being chased, but it's different when you're tunneled off the hook. I can't explain it, but when you get unhooked and the killer starts immediately going after you, it just feels like some agency has been taken away. Obviously not on the same level as hook camping, but removed to some degree more than just getting chased normally. However, the main reason why tunneling also should be removed from the game is because it's way too strong. The killer is removing a survivor from the game. Killers who tunnel and kill a single survivor would have only completed one quarter of their objective, but depending on how early in the game the killers tunneled the survivor out, it just means that the survivors pretty much have no chance to win. The killer only completed one quarter of their objective, and the game is nearly guaranteed to end as a killer victory. Okay, I think I've rambled on for long enough, it's time to wrap this up. Hook camping is bad because it completely removes player agency for an extended period of time, it's insanely strong, it's easy to do, and it feels intuitive. So to all of you suggesting that hook camping can be stopped by disincentivizing the killer, by making a version of camaraderie or kinship or kindred or reassurance base kit, or by making the gens go faster while killers are by the hook, or you're suggesting that we reward killers for hooking all four survivors, or some other type of change along those lines, you're only addressing one reason why hook camping is bad and you're not going to stop killers from hook camping that way. If the killer can so much as stand by a hook to get a single kill, or stop the survivor on the hook from playing the match, then hook camping will not be stopped, much less by the changes that you're suggesting. What we actually need is for it to be completely removed by coding it out of the game. We need to make it impossible to hook camp. I don't care if you're getting hook bombed by all three other survivors. I don't care that it's endgame. I don't care that you hooked them in the basement. I don't care that you're Trapper, Hag, or the twins. I don't care. Completely removing a player's agency via hook camping is so bad. Why do you all of a sudden think that it's okay when it's endgame or when you're playing as a different killer? Hook camping and to a lesser extent tunneling has got to be eradicated from the source. Okay then fine. I hear you ask. If my ideas to get rid of hook camping are wrong, what do you have in mind? Well, that's not the topic of this video. I'll go into detail soon, I hope, about what proper changes are to completely remove camping and tunneling from the game. I'll never get rid of hook camping. We'll see. We'll see.